trouble. And also, good evening to those of you who are watching us online. Of course, this is as, as, as many there you are, and many in great numbers. So in this case, we are very happy that uh, that you are joining in, in spite of uh, in spite of the inability to come to come here. I'm from the Latvian Institute of National Affairs, and uh, this is a book presentation. <laughs> For the most unimportant, this is a book presentation. And uh, those who like to read in paper, as I do actually, then you have gathered here apparently. Uh, those who like to read the electronic version and books online, then in that case uh, you have this book already available now as far as I understand. Yes, electronically it is uh, legally and for free downloadable from the Institute's webpage. And uh, the fact that the book is free is of course made possible by the generous support from our partners uh, who are in this case uh, quite directly advocating uh, quality research and good political, economic, and people-to-people -people relations uh, between the United States of America and uh, Republic of Latvia. So in the name of the Latvian International Affairs, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude uh, to the Embassy of the Republic of Latvia, to the United States, uh, to the Investment and Development Agency of Latvia, to Soft Technica, to Latvenergo, to Freeport of Riga, uh, the Embassy of the U.S. to the Republic of Latvia, and also, last but not definitely not least, American Latvian Association. So cooperation is a is a long-term and consistent effort. With some of you uh, partners, dear partners, we have long worked for. 30 years approximately, so with some, some a bit less, with some hopefully this is, I think it is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. I know I'm doing a cliche, but I couldn't refuse myself to not to quote uh, Humphrey Bogart and Casablanca of 1942. Uh, but speaking about history, uh, 2022 is actually the, uh, the year of centenary of the Euro relationship which was established on July 28th. Um, 1922 when the United States recognized our small northern European country and uh, although at first as, uh, as also one of the authors uh, Aldous Purs in the book writes uh, that uh, the interests of the US to keep the embassy in Riga were mostly associated with uh, gathering intelligence on the Soviet Union. <laughs> we were just close enough. Uh, of course uh, that, uh, that at the end became, uh, became an essential and important element for the further non-recognition policy and, and the Sumner Wells Declaration of 1940 and the fact that Latvia was allowed to keep its, uh, keep its mission in, the, in, in operating in and from Washington, D.C. Uh, it became an essential and instrumental uh, for the sustainability of Latvia's nationhood. Uh, it was also the beginning of the 90s when the U.S. became again very instrumental for us regaining independence, for the withdrawal of the Russian troops from our territory and from from the point of view of joining uh, NATO later. And uh, almost every time when, uh, whenever an American asks, uh, what do Latvians think about America? <laughs> My response is somewhat tricky. I always say, thank you for paying your taxes. <laughs> 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 um, it is largely because of the US military shield. It is because of the US diplomat statement and military uh, that Latvia and the other two Baltic states uh, are, are independent and protected. So in this case, uh, thank you for paying your taxes, which go into the salaries of, of diplomats and, and all the other people who keep, uh, keep the uh, Baltic states uh, safe. So the centenary of relations is actually reflected in our book as well. Uh, you have noticed that there is a design, and many people will say that there is a, uh, it makes no sense, but it makes sense. It actually, the, the curves, and there is one which is bold curve, right? And this is, this w this is where we are. And as you notice, this is, this is where we have been moving out, out and into the next uh, centenary, which in this case, as you see, the lines become wider uh, wider, broader, uh, and, and, and let's hope, and it is our hope, that the relationship between the uh, two countries also in the next centenary will be wider and, 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 and more, more, more elaborate. This book uh, it is a result of a great collaboration between the Latvian International Affairs and multiple authors all around uh, Latvia and academic and, and research sector in the US, academic and research sector, and journalistic sector and political sector as well, uh, of course, in this case. And uh, I would like to especially say thanks to Martin Schwartgulis, who is, uh, who, is, who is over there, who is the co-author of the, of the book, and because of him putting in 
the soul and also the hands uh, into producing this and never giving up in spite of how complicated it occasionally was to uh, to 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 uh, put this project together he was uh, he was he was he was never giving up so uh, and most importantly thanks to all of the uh, authors for the ideas for the emotions for the experiences for the analysis and research that many of you who are here as well some of you I immediately see four are here on on, 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 on stage you Oh yes, you see done as well. So in this case, it is it is it is a great uh, great result, and um, we have a luxury to have so many so many of the authors uh, I see here today. And uh, so in this case, I don't want to be dragging this into into a further d discussion and debate and, and mono monologue of myself. So. Let me introduce uh, Valdi Zatlers, uh, former president of the Republic of Latvia and great friend of Latvian International Affairs, if I may say so. Uh, Daniel Fried, who is joining us online, American diplomat, assistant secretary of state for European and Eurasian Affairs from 2005-2009, and also U.S. ambassador to Poland uh, at the end of the 90s. Karl Streps, uh, American-Latvian journalist and lecturer at the University of Latvia. Not uh, anymore, but... Former lecturer at the University of Latvia. <laughs> 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 Must underline this now. <laughs> and Anthony Bikim, a uh, research fellow in economic freedom, editor of the Index uh, of Economic Freedom and manager of global engagement for the Margaret Thatcher Center for Freedom. I hope I spelled it correctly. <laughs> 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 but of course, this does not reflect fully the achievements and the, and the excellence of the, of, the, of the people who are uh, on the panel today. So please... Uh, read the biography sections in the book uh, so to, to, to know more about them. But, okay, enough from my side. President Zatlers, let, let's start with you immediately. Uh, what is your take on uh, Latvian-U.S. relations uh, now? Can you put it in seven minutes? In two. <laughs> <laughs> you see, mm, it's always a challenge when uh, country with power, military and economic power, with a lot of inhabitants, uh, is building in a relationship with a small country, with two million people, you know, not so strong economy and not so strong armed forces, but uh, a country who is uh, really devoted to freedom and liberty. And uh, we have different scenarios. We have American Latin scenario, which is very honest. And we have, let's say, a uh, Russian-Latvian scenario, which is very dishonest. And we have, you know, a Chinese-Latvian scenario, which is uh, absolutely something different. Uh, uh, you have a lot of smiles, respect, but we don't know what's behind. Uh, so the key word in these relations is how the big nation decides to build these relationships. And in American-Latvian case, I say, this is honest relationship. And uh, you asked me, by the way, a few days ago, you know, that you will ask me the question, you know, why? And uh, I said, because this is a uh, borderline. Uh, borderline. We are on the frontiers of, uh, of uh, rule of order, rule of law, and predictability, and peace. And uh, somebody else is on the other side. And uh, I don't like uh, when people say that, you know, clash of civilizations. This is not a case of, of, of clash of civilizations. It's a clash of interests. And I would say even more, it's a clash of ignorance. And that means, you know, we are dealing with very, very different situation when we have this eastern border of Latvia with the eastern neighbor of Latvia. So and I'm very p happy that Americans understand that. Okay, it was not easy all the time because uh, the Americans were trying, you know, to, to, to make their own democratic way, you know, let's take uh, into account all views in Latvia, let's take into account, you know, different, you know, politicians in, in, in Latvia. And sometimes some of these politicians and some of these views were against Latvian state. And, uh, but it was naive. Let's say 15 years ago, it was naive approach. Democracy is, is a better, so we promote democracy. That means, you know, democracy will win. Uh, I have to say that 
people themselves create democracy, and each country creates its own democracy with the same principles and the same values. So, and uh, I'm very happy to see uh, Daniel Reed. We had some conversations in when I was in office, you know, and I uh, said, uh, on his question, what do you need? I said, we need uh, a very high quality uh, broadcasting <coughs> station, TV station, broadcasting in Russian language, in Baltic states. And uh, then the American approach was very, very simple, you know. It's not a business project, we can't make it because it's not profitable. Uh, because, uh, let's say, all the stake was on strategic nuclear balance. That's uh, transcontinental missiles with definite number of uh, nuclear warheads, and we need a balance uh, to keep the world in peace. Today we see that's not enough. And therefore, you know, the 15 years ago, the approach to the exploring the soft arguments, a soft power techniques. We were very uh, keen to start with the cyber uh, threats and, and this because it was a little bit tangible, but with a soft power influence on the borderline uh, was underestimated. And today we see when the Dodge has left, let's say, they were asked to, to leave, you know, the need for the, the Russian-speaking broadcasting station is coming back again. So uh, we were naive, you know, but in, in 30 years ago, because there was a lot of expectations that Russia will become, you know, a democratic uh, state, uh, and there were a lot of programs like partnership for, f partnership for peace, and, but uh, as we see, all these things failed. And today we can say why, uh, because uh, we had a wishful thinking. We just managed that the, the people across the border, the eastern border of Eastern Europe, think in the same way. They have the same goals. Never again after the war. But now we see, you know, we can repeat on that side. So therefore, you know, the, the inf uh, importance of Latin American I in, uh, in relations is becoming more and more important. And I uh, usually said that when I was a president that uh, when I was, you know, called a Russophobe, and I said, no, I'm not a Russophobe, you know, I'm speaking in Russian language, you know, and I understand uh, and I expect and I, I really wish that Russia to become a democratic country, but uh, I, we have to look at the warning signals. And we are not Russophobes in, here in Latvia. We are a system of early warning. That was really popular in those times they about the missiles, you know, but I said about the real warning. And our expertise is based on, on, on our experience. And the, I'm not talking only about the 1940, which was followed with, with excellent diplomatic measures from the U.S. side, but also about the 50 years under the Soviet occupation. And uh, me being a person that has lived f half of my life in the, in the Soviet regime, the communist re regime, and half of my life in the free, free world, you know, I have all the rights to say what I think, because I can compare these things. And therefore, I can uh, really be sometimes, you know, very provocative in my declarations and statements. Uh, because, I'll say it again, uh, the clash is not over. And that it has become a clash with, uh, with guns. And it's also a clash with economic, you know, let's say weapons, you know. And we have to understand that if you create some economic weapon, you know, the other side is, is adapting immediately. So we need to create new and new types of, of both military and economic weapons. So, and uh, I think, you know, the uh, United States understand that, that we are very useful early warning sensors. And not because, you know, you don't like something, you know, but because we have a real experience. And so, uh, so therefore, I don't think we have much to discuss about the future of American-Latin relationship 
it has always been good it is is good and it must be good in the future because we are on the frontier Inside, but uh, I will, of course. One of the one of the most important keywords that you brought to the discussion is about uh, we us being the uh, early warning system here. So I believe in an analytical framework, right? But now I'm going to ask a very academic methodological question. Um, you also said that we are, uh, we are we we have been accused of Russophobia. I am usually saying we are we are Russophobes. Let's be honest. We are afraid of Kremlin, not of Russians and Russian language and everything else. We're afraid of Kremlin's policy. So phobia, from the point of view of of fear, then that that more or less would fit. But ev not going into discussion whether this fits or not on a, uh, the, the 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 conceptual terminological issue. But if we are here afraid of Russia's policy. Can we actually be a neutral analyst of what's going on in Russia? Uh, who said that we are afraid? That's the question. We are not afraid anymore. That's very important message, both to our citizens and as well to our partners and allies. We are not afraid anymore. We are prepared for any confrontation. Because, you know, the good wish to build a collaborative, you know, relations with Russia failed. And we have come through the confrontation, and total confrontation, with uh, very m uh, few, you know, possibilities to make this uh, situation better, to change it. Because you know, when you lose the trust, you lose it for a long time. And uh, therefore, you know, will come again the positive element, Russia, Latvia, we trust each other, and absolutely opposite. Russia, Latvia, we don't trust each other. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dan, did you, did you hear what President Zotlers was uh, saying? What, what, is, what is your take on the political and, and, and geopolitical uh, perspective from the, from the U.S. Uh, side, from the, from the other side, so to speak, of the, of the ocean? I did indeed hear what President Zotlers had to say. As usual, I found myself in agreement with what President Zappers had to say. <laughs> I wish that I were in Riga with you. I'm right now in California, you know, far away. But the issues we're talking about <clears throat> are central not only to Latvia, but also to the United States. The U.S.-Latvian relationship is about the security of all of Europe in general, but specifically whether the eastern part of Europe is regarded in American strategic thinking, whether we regard the eastern part of Europe as an integral part of Europe and whether we care about its security as essential to our own. A hundred years of U.S. Latvian relations have put that question to the test. Woodrow Wilson did look at all of Europe as a strategic interest of the United States. He failed. The isolationists didn't care about Europe in general, and they most certainly did not care about the eastern part of Europe. They were indifferent. And as a result of that indifference, we left European security to the British and French, and the result was disaster. We needed Stalin to defeat Hitler, and Latvia, Poland, Estonia, Lithuania paid a high price. And that's on us. During the Cold War, the United States defended Western Europe. But the fact is, for much of the Cold War, we forgot about the Wells Declaration. We didn't think that the Atlantic Charter would ever apply to all of Europe, and we essentially accepted the division of Europe as permanent. We didn't like it, but we accepted it. That was the basis of detente, of Nixon and Kissinger's detente with the Soviet Union, tacit acceptance 
of the Iron Curtain, of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. We learned better. Jimmy, President Carter a little bit, President Reagan more, took seriously Wilson's and the Atlantic Charters, Roosevelt's vision at the Atlantic Charter, not Yalta, of an undivided Europe and the possible success of freedom. The Poles in 1989, the Latvians, Estonians, and Lithuanians in 1990-91 demonstrated that the U.S. Cold War assumptions of a permanently divided Europe were not necessarily a guide to the future. You took them down. You did that. The Poles, the Czechs, the Romanians in the streets of Bucharest, the people of the eastern part of Europe themselves dismantled the Soviet empire. And in the 1990s, the Americans, George H.W. Bush and, and Clinton, rediscovered the American principles of the Atlantic Charter and Wilson's 14 points. Those of us who were designing the policy of NATO enlargement in the 1990s understood that we had a, we Americans had a second chance to realize the objectives of the Atlantic Charter and to undo our catastrophic mistake of isolationism, which resulted in Yalta and uh, in Yalta Europe and the division of Europe. Latvians. Poles, Lithuanians, Estonians, and others gave Americans the chance to undo some of the consequences, some of the consequences of our mistake. And we did so. We brought Poland, Hungary, Czech Republic into NATO. Later, President George W. Bush made the decision. He made it himself. It was his call. His administration could have gone the other way, but he made the call to offer 20 years ago, at just over 20 years ago at the Prague NATO summit, offer membership to the Baltic states as well as other countries in East, in East, the Europe's Eastern tier. We did it. We didn't do it on our own. We did it because Latvia and other countries had overthrown communism and then built democracy democracies and functioning free market economies. On the basis of your achievements, both overthrowing communism and post-1991 transformation, the Americans were in a position to draw the right conclusions and act upon them. Now, all of this ought to be history, but of course it isn't history, it's really current events because Putin is trying to undo the fall of the Soviet empire and retake it by force. He is failing. The Ukrainians are resisting. He will not be able to crush them, but he can kill many people and the war isn't over. It hangs in the balance. So US Latvian relations over the past hundred years are embedded in a strategic challenge that we're still in the middle of. It's not history. We can't look back and say, what a great job we did. We need to support Ukraine. What is the US Latvian agenda now? Well, first it's cooperation to turn back Putin's aggression against Ukraine right now and potentially against the Baltic states. If he wins in Ukraine, he will try something else. But he must not win in Ukraine, and he may not, and in fact, he seems to be losing. We need to turn back Putin's aggression. Secondly, we need to strengthen our resilience at home. Europe and the United States, all of Europe, faces dangers from radical movements, sometimes on the right, often on the right. That's true in the United States. It seems to be true in Germany. 
we need to strengthen our democracies. We need to strengthen our systems. We need to provide in my country, we need to narrow the gap between the rich and the poor and strengthen the middle class as the Biden administration is trying to do. And we need to strengthen Europe in general and the transatlantic relationship. We face an aggressive, virulently hostile authoritarian Russia. We also face a more profound strategic challenge from China, not as virulent, perhaps not as aggressive, but much greater in its potential to deal with the twin and different authoritarian challenges we need to strengthen the world's democratic core, starting with the US and Europe. We Americans need a strong Europe. European strength is something that I don't want to hear just the French talking about, you know, European autonomy, European strategic autonomy and all that. I want to see it. Europe has done well in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. They have stuck with the Ukrainians longer and with more determination than many thought possible. Russia used the energy weapon against Europe as Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, Poland warned for years and the United States warned for years that he would. And Europe did not fold. Europe is managing. Latvia <clears throat> has taken oversized hits since 2014, but has stayed the course. Europe must do the same. The United States needs to help them. We need to strengthen transatlantic unity. We need a strong Europe. Those are the challenges. The, la the, hundred years, the last hundred years of U.S.-Latvian relations gives us the experience, huh, experience some of it gained through failure and much through success gives us the ability to know what's important and know what we must do now. It's a pleasure to be here. I wish I could be with you in person more than you know. And I hope to again, and thank you for the opportunity. Daniel, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for your, uh, for your uh, uh, very, very, very uh, great insight into into, into the uh, last last century and the importance. There there is an element which I would like you to very shortly comment on, uh, which you s explained about the 90s, beginning of the 90s, and the importance of the of, of Latvia and the Baltic states and the, our transition to the United States. Um, some time ago, I also spoke to some of the uh, advisors, former advisors of, uh, of 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 President Biden when he was still Vice President, and I was asking. The same question: What 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 he sees? Why why the U.S. is interested? What what, what President Zelensky was asking: a, a huge country, and there is a small two million country. What what is there? And the response was rather interesting. He said that basically, we have a symbolic value in the eyes of the uh, of, of of President Biden because we are we are a success story of democratization. We are a success story of uh, of of, of uh, uh, becoming uh, an open market economy. In these dire times that you were describing, the, the, the war in Ukraine, Russia's attack, are we still that important or are we even more important or are we less important? If you could just very shortly comment on this, please. I would put it this way. President Biden is 10 years older than I am. That means that he grew up he came of age in the president during the presidency of John F. Kennedy. For his generation, for him personally, the lessons of World War II, the failure of the United States to help Europe in time to prevent that war, the failure of isolationism is nothing he read about in books. It's much closer to his lived experience it's much more immediate to him. 
So for him, the fate of Europe's smaller vulnerable democracies is not abstract. He understands that giving up on those smaller vulnerable democracies, like we gave up on Czechoslovakia in 1938, leads to larger and worse consequences. He understands that Latvia's security, that Baltic security is in fact linked to our own. And that's not an abstract proposition. We know that because that's what happened in history. We thought in our mistake in the 1930s that European security had nothing to do with us. And that security in Eastern Europe was far removed from our interests. But in fact, how did the Cold War end? It, the Cold War ended because the peoples of Eastern Europe, 100 million people between the Baltic and the Black Sea, overthrew communism in the name of freedom, democracy, and their own national patriotism all linked. Yeah, the United States is big and Latvia is not big. Okay, I get it. But the issues in U.S.-Latvian relations are issues of strategic importance. Now, there are other, Ameri there are other American points of view. There is the so-called realist school, so-called, because they believe in spheres of influence, and they believe that basically Moscow is a great power and smaller powers are of no account. They don't put it quite that way, but that's what, pretty much what it comes down to. <clears throat> there is that school. There is the hard right school, the Trumpite school, that believes in um, balance of power and spheres of influence and basically a sympathy for Vladimir Putin. They don't care at all about democracy or the lessons of the last hundred years. But there is also the Reaganite school still there, and they do care. The right is divided. There are some on the left who have this weird softness for Ukraine for for Russia and they would like us to push Ukraine into a peace but they're not influential within the Democratic Party so to answer your question which is not a simple one at all I would say that Latvia matters to the United States the Baltic countries matter to the United States because we learned the hard way that security in Europe is not easily divisible. We have to take seriously security of all of Europe. And so when Biden says we will defend every inch of NATO territory, he means it. Again, not an abstraction to him, given his age and experience. Anyway, I've gone on too long to answer what you may have thought was a simple question, but it's not simple at all. It's a serious one. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Daniel, very much. It's, it's you know, it's like with legal documents. Sometimes the preambula and explanation why the thing is happening is more important than uh, and more interesting to read than the actual decision <laughs> at, at, at the end. But thank you very much. The actual decision was absolutely also also necessary. Uh, I will move on now to the uh, uh, journalist. <laughs> no, oh. no, no, to the journalist. Uh, to the journalist and. Uh, as, a, as a also as a former uh, former <laughs> lecturer at the University of Latvia, what would be your analysis on uh, on 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 people to people relations? You wrote a chapter. You 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 have lived your life with one 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 leg in the U.S., the other leg in 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 in, in Latvia. You have seen both sides, uh, and you have seen the interaction which is uh, which is taking place, and, and and how it has been involving these relations. Could you could you? Explain to us uh, your analytical outlook on when, again, seven minutes. Um, yes, <laughs> in seven minutes, how the uh, how these relationships between people have been have been evolving and emerging. Okay, uh, the first thing I would like to say, I he's right. I've lived half my life in America and the other half here in Latvia. I grew up in a Latvian family. It wasn't that I suddenly up and decided to move to Eastern Europe, but. Um, there's a two things that I'd really like to say. The first is to remember that America is first and foremost a transactional country. Uh, back in the 90s, there was the belief here in Latvia that the only thing the Americans wanted was a McDonald's on every corner and Coca-Cola in every school in the nation. 
Um, but at the same time, the serious issues which Americans talk about, were there not a substantial Jewish minority in the United States, the United States would not have gone on and on and on to press Latvia to do more to address the Holocaust and to, to bring to justice the people in Latvia who took part in the, in the Holocaust. Um, back in the 1920s, uh, the United States lingered on recognizing the Baltic states primarily because the United States hoped that something would, other than the Bolsheviks would emerge in the wake of the Russian Empire, something that the Americans could work better with than the Bolsheviks. Um, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, George Bush waited longer than Boris Yeltsin and longer than the Soviet Union to recognize the independence of Latvia. Uh, because he, w he felt that he was a good friend of Mikhail Gorbachev and he uh, was afraid of what was going to happen to the nukes. So this was also a, a, a transactional thing. As to people, um, people and people, the one thing that I would like to specifically talk about is how important the American Latvian community was during the Cold War. Um, during all those 50 years, there was the American Latvian Association, uh, there was the World Federation of Free Latvians, which also included the Canadian, the European, the Australian, and the South American uh, Latvian organizations. Uh, the World Federation of Free Latvians to this very day calls itself the World Federation of Free Latvians, which is a little ironic since for 30 years the people of Latvia have also been free. But during those um, 50 years, the American Latvian Association and the Lithuanian and Estonian organizations set up sort of political action committees in America. And one thing that they did every year, they found sponsors in Congress, uh, to sufficient numbers of sponsors in Congress to pass the so-called Captive Nations Resolution, which said um, Latvia is still occupied, we still don't like it, we still wish it weren't so. And every year they had to go back and do the lobbying for that to be um, necessary. Uh, it was this community without any doubt which uh, convinced the elder George Bush to be pleased about what was happening in the Baltic states rather than resistant, even if, if he was afraid of what, was, what the end game there was going to be. Um, as to Americans, uh, Bill Clinton came to Latvia in 1994. He spoke at the Freedom Monument, and without his personal involvement, it would have been much, much, much more difficult to get the Russian army out of Latvia. He, uh, among other things on that trip, talked to Boris Yeltsin and said, look, this, this, can't, this can't remain. And he was here in June, and the uh, army was gone by the end of August. So that, that worked. Um, the, as, as Mr. Freed said, without the direct personal involvement of George Bush the Younger, I don't think NATO would have thought highly of admitting a small country which had about 37 soldiers and one tank. You know, so I'm, I'm exaggerating, but only, only a little bit. It was an enormous, enormous credit of faith that was given to the Baltic states by NATO in particular, and also to a, to a large extent, the uh, European Union. Um, since the collapse of the Soviet Union, there have been a couple of programs which have uh, brought people together between the United States and Latvia. Um, here in Latvia, the Soros Foundation uh, did a lot of work in, in developing relations between America and, and uh, Latvia. George Soros himself had some fairly peculiar views about how Latvia should move forward, especially in, uh, in approaching its uh, non-Latvian population. But one program that we had was uh, we, we offered students who had finished the 10th grade uh, six, we six months or a year head of school in America. And uh, we probably, over the course of the program, sent 40 or 50 young people to America. And I remember one specific kid who called after a week, and he was crying, and he was homesick, and he wanted to come home, and we said, you can't come home, you know, th this is a year-long program. When he came back, he was a completely different person. He, he left as a shy little Latvian. He returned as a proud globalist. Uh, who was prepared to work uh, in politics and, and in international affairs. Um, the American Latvian Association for years and years has had a program called Hello Latvia, 
uh, Sveika Latvia, which brings um, youngsters to Latvia for a couple of weeks for a program. Uh, these are, uh, there are two different programs. One is for kids who have at least some understanding of the Latvian language, and the other is for kids who have no understanding of the Latvian language at all. Um, linguistic theory tells us that by the third generation, uh, the, the mother li language is usually forgotten in diaspora communities. And uh, Latvians have done a great deal to, to keep Latvian children, you know, sort of involved. There are Latvian schools and summer schools and, 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 and whatnot, but reality is reality. Um, the not many, many young Latvians don't really speak Latvian anymore. Um, given an opportunity to come for a couple of weeks and see what's going on in Latvia, one of my nephews came one year and told me afterwards that the very first place that they were taken was to the so-called corner building here in Riga, which was where the KGB was, was centered. And there's a fairly gruesome exhibition there about the occupation and what the KGB was. And that's an interesting place to start a tour of Latvia, I suppose. Um, but uh, I have another nephew who grew up uh, with, my, my sister married a black American, so he's half black. And he grew up speaking English, but when he was a teenager, started to complain to his mother, why haven't you taught me Latvian? And um, she and he were here for the Latvian centennial in 2018, and he got by perfectly well uh, talking. He's a very friendly kid. He, he met all sorts of young people here in Latvia. They could converse in Latvian. They mostly wanted to speak in English, but that, you know, he, he wanted to speak in Latvian in stores. He did well. So um, it, it really is a person-to-person -person kind of thing. I know that the Latvian Ministry of Education has all kinds of materials for Latvian Saturday and Sunday schools and summer schools, not only in U the United States, but also in Europe, where there are substantial Latvian diaspora communities. Um, generally speaking, I think that the relationship between America and, and Latvia is fine. I don't think America spends a whole lot of time thinking about Latvia, to be perfectly honest. Um, when it needs something from us, we are usually ready to step up. We did take part in the Partnership for Peace program, and we sent peacekeepers to uh, Bosnia, and we sent troops to Iraq and to Afghanistan when we were asked to do so, understanding, of course, that this was a prerequisite for us to be admitted to NATO. Um, so, so the relationship has always been good, and I believe it will continue to be good. Thank you, Thank you Carlos, very much for the, uh, for the, uh, for the, for the great, uh, great explanation. I have a question which uh, actually is completely unrelated to what you were just explaining, and it's a very provocative one, because I was, I was actually thinking about it, uh, whom to ask, and I thought that well, you must be probably the, uh, the best one to ask this, because of your spot-on analysis and, and understanding of the Latvian population as well. Um, who are Latvians? Democrats or Republicans? Um, American Latvians tended to be Republicans simply because they perceived that Roosevelt, a Democrat, had sent their, sent their country up the river at Yalta. Um, so, so they were pretty automatically Republican. I came into politics basically as a Republican. My grandfather was, my maternal grandfather was very active in the Republican Party. It had this ethnic group branch where they had, the, you know, the Hungarians and the Czechs and the Latvians and the Lithuanians and the Estonians. So I came up that way. Um, I was present for the second inauguration of Richard Nixon in 1972. My grandfather took me along to that. Um, for me personally, the breaking point was the Reagan administration, which explained that trees cause more pollution than cars and that ketchup should be seen as a vegetable for school nutrition programs. Um, I became a Democrat then and have been a Democrat ever since. Uh, the breaking point for many Latvians was in the 1992 election, specifically because George Bush the Younger had, had dragged his feet on re-recognizing re re the uh, independence of Latvia. And I don't, well, I mean, it's a secret election, but anecdotally, I know that lots of Latvians voted for Clinton instead of Bush. Thank you. Uh, you answered my curiosity. Uh, Anthony, uh, the book consists of three, uh, three, three sections, the political, the people to people, and the economic, or economic and people to people. So you're representing the economic section in this case. <laughs> if you could please, uh, again, if I may kindly ask, in approximately seven minutes, uh, ex explain Absolutely. the relationship between the <laughs> United States and Latvia and from the economic perspective. Absolutely, Carlos. I'll try my best to finish six minutes, 35 seconds. You can, you can <laughs> time this. 
first and foremost, delighted to be back in Riga. I mean, needless to say, the Inst uh, Latvian Institute for International Affairs, top-notch, professional, high capacity. I really appreciate this timely occasion. I think President and Ambassador Fried set the tone near perfect. President said, where we were, where we are, where we should be. In my view, especially when it comes down to economic issues, of course, Latvia is a part of EU, member of NATO, but we can do a lot more U.S.-Latvian bilateral relationship. We talked about person to person, family to family, let's say political word to political word. I've been in Washington, D.C. about 30 years now, and as you know well, Washington has two political sports teams, Democrat and Republican. But when it comes down to U.S.-Latvia relationship, in my humble view, it's not really about Democrat versus Republican. This is really about America and Latvia because we share the values, as President reminded us, and Ambassador Fried followed that up. Why? Why are we sharing these values? Somehow it's given. It's very organic for us to think you know, similar way. We're really willing and like-minded partners. For me, I think we share three I's, what I call. First I is ideas. The second I is individuals. Third I is institutions. Of course, we had a different journey. United States, its own history making. Latvia, obviously. But we are celebrating here 100 years kind of together, journey together. What's really important, as we are discussing today, is what's ahead of us. And you, Carlos, earlier in your intro remark, you said wider and broader. I'll add one more adjective. It's time to go deeper. Because right now, especially since February 24, this unacceptable 21st century conflict, it broadened our horizon. Because when we talk about security, it's not anymore conventional military security. It's about economic security. It's about cyber security. It's about energy security. So we now have a broadened parameters. We have to work harder. So to me, today's occasion is really not resetting, but elevating our partnership. We are friends. We don't have to prove I love you, I like you. I think our attitude, if I may, should be let's do more. Let's go wider, deeper, broader. So energy is a perfect example. In a way, perhaps Latvia was wanting to do this, but I think now we have a really in a tragic way, we have a new opportunity to up the game. I'm talking about energy independence, energy security. And this is a really a venue we can be creative and innovative, inviting public sector as well as a private sector. Of course, we can talk about a lot of political differences and all that stuff, but to me, once again, three eyes. We share ideas. We have a willing, like-minded individuals, ambassadors, you know, presidents, and actual practitioners of foreign, foreign policies and journalists. So let's put aside these political background. Let's focus on the policies so that we can move forward. It's not about moving forward. Do we want to move backward? If you wish, by all means. But my last point is this. Our journey together, if I may, it's not about subtracting and dividing. It should be about adding and multiplying. And I think right now is a good time. 2023 will be, unfortunately, another political circus here around the world. So let's fasten our seatbelt and let's, let's move forward together. Let me stop right there. Well, may, I, may I add something sure. to this? Um, I, I thought your four eyes were going to include interests and investments, so maybe there are, are, are five. They that can are be part of ideas and yeah. institutions. And but, all but one thing that I would say is America has been of critical importance in bringing Latvia to heel, specifically in the area of corruption. Um, the American Magnitsky Act has caught a couple of crooked politicians here in Latvia, and it was America that said, you clean up your banking sector or we're, we're going to put you on a blacklist. And that was the very first job for the government which took office four years ago and is, is about to be replaced tomorrow by a new, well, basically the same government, but a new version of the same government. That was the very first thing they had to do because our banking sector was a mess 
for a long time. It was laund laundr money laundering central for Russia and, and other, other countries like that. And Amer America specifically said, no, you can't have that. <coughs> and that was a good thing. Thank you. It's a rather a page in our history that we probably are a bit uh, too embarrassed to remember ourselves, <laughs> so thank you for reminding us that. Uh, but uh, Anthony, if I may ask, because uh, I, was, I, was, I was blushing when you said uh, so many nice words about the Latin international affairs, uh, and I was thinking that the last time I was blushing that the America is saying something positive about Latvia was probably when the previous President Trump called us tremendous people. <laughs> and um, that, wa that was, of course, at that point, uh, one of those things. We have had President Obama giving enormously important and essential speeches, the same with uh, George W. Bush, uh, for us, uh, historically essential, but nobody had ever called us tremendous people before. Uh, but there is a question <laughs> in where I'm leading to, because um, we have a, 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 um, many of the people who are here in this audience and also many of the, uh, of the, of the partners uh, who, who helped with producing this book are actual businesses and are actual businesses and, 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 and agencies, agencies supporting businesses. So the blonde question is, uh, because there is somewhat a discrepancy, uh, politically, military, U.S. is the strategic partner uh, for, for, for the three Baltic states. If you look at the investment volumes, then they are actually <coughs> much, much lower, proportionally much lower. Uh, first of all, oh, why do you think it is like this? Because in my mind, it, it should be related to the understanding how U.S. sees Latvia, and therefore I was also referring to the tremendous people story. But uh, in your mind, is it, is, it, is it only about the country's image, or is there something else? Great question, and also I appreciate your very diplomatic embedded sarcasm, but you know, I'm not a diplomat, <laughs> and this is really about you know, expressing our ideas, what to do next, so I really welcome that. And by the way, I want to say, I'm from a think tank called the Heritage Foundation in Washington, D.C. Some of you may know, some of you may have different ideas about us, but you have my open invitation. Everyone here, whatever reason you come to Washington, send me an email, you will be warmly welcome to the Heritage Foundation to continue our dialogue. Now, to me, Latvia is not a small country, if I may, between Estonia and Lithuania. Latvia is a center of Baltic region. And again, I say this, perhaps we haven't had a chance to utilize this more strategically. Or maybe we've been somehow, one day we'll do. Let's celebrate 100th year first, maybe. But right now, the whole geopolitical landscape has been completely changed. Like I said, security is not anymore NATO-related tanks and airplanes and bullets. That's important. I'm not saying, well, that's it, or you know, uh, let's put them aside. They are equally important, but let's broaden our security parameters because that's how we can really win these ideas. Old, outdated versus discredited versus new, what we need, value sharing, alliance. And I think there comes a unique space. Again, I kind of briefly highlighted the angle energy security. I'm especially excited about your you know, upcoming new LNG terminal by uh, uh, Skulte. I see that as a really kind of a new linchpin, if I may. I'm not here to sketch, paint things over optimistically, but what it is and what it is. You've been through pretty uh, elevated national debate in terms of this new LNG terminal. You know, utility of it, you know, you talked about, uh, discussed about environmental dimensions, why do we need it, why do we have to do this, and all that. But the conclusion is, let's move forward. Then we have something called 3 Cs initiative. So this is another important connector between Washington and many countries in Europe through infrastructure development, connectivity, and energy security. So I think we have a real good case to make here in the name of really expanding our security parameters and broadening our security partnership and uh, the energy security cooperation and partnership and building something very concrete for the future, for the next generation, for the next you know, 100 years. And if I may, Mr. President, I really like your description. We don't know what Chinese are really thinking. They're smiling, handshaking, visiting, but they, have do, they do have agenda. To me, Big problem concerning China is their name, PRC. It's not really People's no Republic. It's a communist China. 
but they say we are People's Republic of China. They do soft power diplomacy, hard power diplomacy, energy, infrastructure, and everything. But my humble suggestion here, I hope this is not really provocative. When I'm thinking about next 100 years, not even 100 years, 25 years, 10 years, like a near-term horizon, as a private sector economist and an independent thinker, we've got to be really practical here. I see potential unique opportunity surrounding this LNG terminal. It's not just Washington and Riga. I think we can invite like-minded, willing countries in Europe as well as in the Pacific. I'm talking about Japanese, South Korean, because they do have technology and capacity to build. So I think we can have really adding and multiplying operation altogether. And I think this may be something that private sector you know, company leaders or even Amcham, because building something means we have to invest. We have to take risk so that we can realize that potential opportunity. And in my view, you do have a very specific opportunity ahead of you. Perhaps this is time to grab it, not just let it go. Much. This is this is this is very encouraging, uh, and 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 um, makes 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 one think. Um, I would like to open the uh, floor to the discussions, and we also have the first uh, first discussant, uh, Kaspar Roshkalns, uh, the director of the uh, Latvian Investment and Development Agency. If you could be so kind and kick off the debate, uh, please. And afterwards, I will I will more than happy to take uh, take the. Plano will, will gladly take your questions. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, obviously, uh, I would like to thank the other team of the authors uh, on um, this uh, important book on uh, how the relations between two nations uh, have developed uh, in, in, in that period of time, especially, obviously, that the timing is, uh, is uh, super important uh, while we are building the strategic relationship between the Latvia and the U.S. Um, obviously, I would like to maybe a little bit uh, elaborate on what uh, Mr. Anthony uh, Kim just uh, just told us. Latvian Investment and Open Agency focuses on foreign trade and incoming inbound in investment. That's that's definitely the pillar of uh, how do we see security through the prism of uh, of bilateral trade and and uh, in investment. And here, obviously, the numbers uh, actually speaks uh, for themselves. In uh, 2021, uh, the Latvian export uh, grew by something around 35% uh, to U.S. And actually, the, the structure of the export uh, during the last maybe seven years have changed from uh, raw materials or, let's say, almost raw materials to the biggest, biggest product to exports in 2020 was electronics. So that's uh, obviously what is we, we, we are seeing that U.S. actually have spotted Latvia. And, uh, and uh, normally, how, how do we see that the trade comes first and after the trade comes investment? And uh, again, I uh, would uh, relate to the Three Cs initiative. We hosted this year a uh, forum here in, in Riga uh, that was uh, in June. Uh, 14 presidents uh, at some point uh, were on stage. And uh, obviously this uh, was uh, not only investment forum, but uh, actually the biggest biggest focus for us was to show during the June that 14 presidents of independent states can all together meet in uh, Riga, Latvia, let's say 300 kilometers from, from the Russia, and that's safe. And uh, again, this is the, the safety uh, is definitely something that uh, can be guaranteed by U.S. and uh, and again, this is uh, this is something that uh, we try to promote as much as we can uh, within the U.S. We have just opened up a representative office, uh, so we have now two offices in U.S. and we're thinking about the third one because uh, we see that U.S. is uh, because of the whatever relations with China, etc., because of the global support chains and and so on. They are looking for new partners, mm -hmm. and they are looking for new partners. Uh, also, how <coughs> to enter Europe, and we we see the Latvia is uh, definitely on the diplomatic partner for for a long time, and uh, we are ready to be also partner uh, on bigger economy scale, because we are a window to enter European Union, not to enter two million market, but to enter four hundred million market, and uh, from the legislation point of view, we have one of the best 
uh, tax systems. So we, we just need to tell US businesses this. And if we combine this with the energy and, and security and safety, we see this is actually the, the great time to have this, uh, this, this the next step in the Latvia-US relations. Thank you. For, uh, for, for, for starting the debate uh, on, on and giving us a rather rather precise uh, numbers to, uh, to, to, to operate with. Um, colleagues, uh, please, if, if, if there are immediately questions, raise your hands. Yes, we have Andres. So uh, one, of the, one of the masterminds behind the book, by the way, as well, uh, Andres Prus, the member of the, uh, of the Latvian parliament. Well, that sounds weird to say that. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Gali. Thank you, dear colleagues and friends. Uh, yes, Andres Prus. Uh, uh, I was supposed to be now a, uh, a scholar at uh, George Washington University in uh, Washington, D.C., researching on transatlantic relations and European energy security. Instead, I happen to be a member of the Latvian Parliament. Yes, <laughs> you, 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 are, you, are, you are right. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, contributions and for contributions in many ways uh, for the for this, I think, very important uh, research uh, project. And I'm happy that exactly also today we have excellent panels sort of as a, uh, for sort of final uh, manifestation of this project. But let's hope that it is just a uh, part of uh, the, the whole project of Latvian US or US Latvian interaction. And exactly sort of we've seen last 100 years as an important uh, years of engagement or as a years of important engagement. And uh, of course, U.S. Uh, has been in many ways, as Madeleine Aldright was saying, indispensable uh, for Latvian security, for Latvian independence, uh, continuously. It doesn't mean that there were no some of the challenges as well. Uh, actually, the recognition, international recognition, came quite late. We should also remember that one. There was some reluctance. But once it came, U.S. certainly became one of the most indispensable and staunchest allies and partners and supporters of, uh, of Latvia, three Baltic countries in general. So that's why, of course, uh, we highly appreci appreciate our interaction. Uh, now for the next 100 years. Uh, it's always challenging to assess and challenging to draw those scenarios. There are a couple of publications. Uh, George Friedman, I think, uh, wrote a quite an interesting book on the next 100 years, also sort of discussing what is U.S. role. And uh, this brings me to two schools of thought, if I may say so. One school of thought certainly is that we remain, in many ways, integral part of Euro-Atlantic, transatlantic uh, security community. We are indispensable to each other, transatlantic part, or U.S. and Canada, and Europe, on the other hand. Uh, that this symbolism remains important, The transatlanticism remains important, mutual engagement in, uh, remains important. There is a second school of thought as well, that U.S. might be less uh, enthusiastic about interventions, that it might be more uh, mercantile, more selective in its way, more self-sufficient, and uh, that it is more, in a sense, inwards looking. Uh, so there are opportunities on one hand to continue what we have, but at the same time, let's be open and frank, we also face some challenges. If you look right now, there is a big discussion on Inflation Reduction Act that, well, that it actually brings U.S. and Europe, I would not say immediately apart, but certainly this is a trend which creates some tensions and frictions uh, also in the future. So how we look, how we connect our trade systems, how we connect our investment systems, how we connect our economies in general. So that's why, of course, there are those issues. So my question, um, two parts. One is, what is your assessment of the hybrid model of this interaction? Because let's be realistic. In a hybrid model, there are those opportunities which all of you, and especially also Anthony, Joe, very specifically and practically explain and uh, as a very important uh, measures and steps. At the same time, certainly there will be challenges. So what are those challenges? I think to keep those relationships indispensable to each other, we should realize those challenges. And exactly so, then comes the second part of my question. What Europeans, and I could add, I am the chairman of European Affairs Committee, so that's why what the Europeans can do also to make Europe more attractive 
and also for transatlantic relations to prosper in the future as they prospered in the past. And more specifically, what Latvians or boats also could do. What are our homework? Because it's not just a one-way street that we are on the front line, and that's it. Yeah, I, of course, I would like to agree with President that we must be interesting, there must be security, but in our life, nothing is taken for granted as well. Yeah, things are changing. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Great thank question. you, Andres, for keeping your questions in the scope of seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Therefore, I'm very soft on that. <laughs> so, Anthony, please, oh. uh, there was it's a question which was like immediately to, to you, and then maybe uh, President Zatlers, uh, you, could, you, could, you could address With it. With your permission, Mr. President. I'll make the conclusions. Okay. I think that's excellent really excellent set of questions, something that we need to think through together. Again, if I may, I want to highlight my three eyes, ideas, individuals, and institutions. So that means U.S.-Latvian uh, relationship is not mainly driven by 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. It's not driven by White House. It's not driven by executive branch only. It's an important stakeholder player. We have to broaden who we are interacting with. If I may, since you mentioned Inflation Reduction Act, this is not a political statement, this is a factual statement. Inflation Reduction Act, IRA, was engineered by the White House and members of Congress, especially Democrats. And it was a very partisan board. No Republican voted for the IRA. It's all driven by Democrats. It's a factual statement. So what I'm saying is that we need to pay attention to Congress, especially new Congress, because the United States, we just had a midterm election. And obviously, there was no red wave. I think, in a way, it was something constructive, because many people thought there could be some kind of red wave or something. But the implication of no red wave is actually far and wide and still ongoing. So let me stop on that front right here so that you can talk about and analyze other things. But my main point is that 2023 will be very important for our relationship and also how we interact with Congress, especially you, Andreas, because now you are a member of Latvian parliament. In a way, we cannot give blind trust to the United States Congress. They have all the answers. They know all the, all the solutions. We have to remind them. We have to educate them, if I may. We have to re-educate them, if I may, because New members of Congress, let's say, you know, uh, especially the House side, they may not know the vibrant partnership relationship we have with Latvia. So that may be my job when I go back to Washington. I continue to do my homework. You know, I'm a simply a fan of Latvia. So there are many, many things we can facilitate and connect. Again, I want to emphasize this will be policy discussion, not political, like, uh, you know, you are with us, you are not with us. And eventually, we'll have to really make this pie bigger and wider and deeper so that we can really enjoy every dimension of it. Now, that's why I think we have to be very concrete and specific. That's why economic dimension matters more than ever in the context of economic security, because we are talking about supply chain issue. IRA, fundamentally, it was about how to counterbalance China how to remap supply chain. Mm -hmm. To me, Latvia should be a bit more proactive. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to report, Mr. President, your ambassador to Washington, D.C., Ambassador Salva, he's a very good diplomat representing your country. We have a very constructive, ongoing engagement with him. It's been always like this with the embassy of Latvia in Washington, D.C. So we want to broaden that proactive communication channels. You know. We don't do this book for the sake of publishing a book. We do this to map out our action plans, and we have to give real life into this book. So my final point on your question is, let's really be ambitious, if I may, and proactive. Mm -hmm. Let's work with the private sector. Let's make this LNG terminal as a reality. Let's broaden our economic engagement. Look at your well-educated labor force. They are hungry for and eager to do greater, much more complicated economic functions. 
to me, Latvia is a functioning free market democracy. That's why we are allies and partners. And we shouldn't be shy about that. And we've got to deepen our relationship on that front. So let's be concrete and specific. If I may pick up on, sure. on what Anthony was talking about here. Um, I think that one thing that we need to think about is not so much the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years. In, in America, it is the next few election cycles. Um, generally speaking, I have taught, when I talked to people in Latvia's government about the four years of the Trump administration, they said that nothing really changed in the relationship between the United States and Latvia because they're, you know, the, 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 the bu underneath all the chaos, um, the relationship was preserved. But what happened, what we need to keep in mind though, is that this was an administration which very, very, very much coddled Vladimir Putin and the world's dictators to the expense of democratic uh, thinking. And people ought, there are people in Europe who have picked up on this. The last Italian election led to the, the uh, imposition of a government that is fairly radically rightist. Um, in Germany, there are parties. In Sweden, they are in government. Hungary has gone totally illiberal. Poland has gone very largely ir illiberal. Um, people all over the world have taken inspiration from this. The other thing that I would like to predict is that the next two years, the House of Representatives of the United States is going to be absent. It is going to, it had, the Republicans have a three vote majority. It is going to be chaos. They are not going to accomplish anything. And that is not good for Latvia. It is not good for the United States. It is not good for the world. The, the Republican party is broken. Um, you know, their radical people are talking about cutting off aid to Ukraine because they don't want, you know, what's Ukraine? That, th that's not important to us. We're Americans. And so um, it is a dangerous situation in which American politics is right now. And it, it would behoove all of us to have that mended as quickly as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Um, President Zettler, I, I, if, if I may kindly, uh, you will allow me to look past you <laughs> to Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> I will give Good. you the floor back, as you said, you want to, you, you want to do the wrap up uh, answer to Andres's question. But Daniel, uh, what, 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 what is your comments on, on, on what Andres was uh, asking about the next, uh, next hundred years? With respect to American politics, there is a fight within the Republican Party between the Trumpistas who do not believe in a, the free world or a values-driven world or a democratically-oriented world. They believe in power. They're, they are sympathetic to Putin, very much in a way that Viktor Orban seems to be. And that wing of the Republican Party likes Viktor Orban a lot. But they're not yet the majority within the Republican Party, and they may fail. The Reaganites in the Republican Party are still there. Um, I must say, I see that being played, that those fights being play, are being played out in many Washington uh, venues, including the Heritage Foundation. But I think that the American tradition of supporting freedom and the Reaganite tradition for, for the Republicans on the right and the, Truman the Truman-esque position for the Democrats will ultimately prevail. The question is, is damage going to be done along the way? Will damage be done along the way? So far, the United States has reacted well to Putin's invasion of Ukraine. And this is a key, this is a key test. And I have every faith that we will continue we will continue to step up to the challenge. You know, for the next hundred years of U.S.-Latvian relations, yes, much depends on the American political debate. Latvia, as some of the speakers have mentioned, has contributed well and constructively to that debate. You know, the Latvian American community uh, was strong and worked with other Central and East European communities through J-Banks, through the Central and Eastern European Coalition. And it did have an impact on the Clinton administration's thinking on whether or not to enlarge NATO. I was in the Clinton NSC staff, was on the Clinton NSC staff in those years, so I know what I'm talking about. All credit, all credit to the Latvian 
Americans, Baltic Americans, Central East European Americans. So I would say they should get in that fight. The struggle that, and the for Ukraine's freedom and the debates within the United States about Ukraine's freedom are struggles that Latvians understand very well. Very well. That used to be about you. Thank God it isn't. But I would encourage Latvians to work this hard and act as you have in the past, not just on behalf of your own country, but on behalf of common values as a kind of conscience of the West. In any event, the, the discussion here gives me, um, gives me hope for the future to hear so many committed people. And thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, very much. Uh, President Zatler. So at first I have to say that I totally agree uh, what was say, with, with what was said uh, before to answer on this question, you know. Uh, this is a reality, you know. People don't think uh, in the same way uh, in a democratic society. And uh, the hybrid is uh, just a compromise. Is a hybrid car good or not? Nobody knows. But uh, basically I agree with that, that we have to work hard and to work with the American Congress. Uh, to repeat, 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 to keep Latvia on the radar screen of the Congress and to, uh, to tell them why we are important. Because, uh, you know, the otherwise they will lose us, you know. If we are not active, you know, nobody knows us. That's about the American side and Latvian side. But uh, Andres being, you know, a chairman of a European Affairs Commission, you know, few words about uh, the Europe. Uh, it's much more easier to predict uh, what will happen in Europe than what will happen in America. Sorry to say that, uh, but uh, bec because there are some reasons behind. And uh, the only problem I is that uh, too much politi political correctness uh, doesn't help us mm. to see what's happening in, in Europe. And uh, I'm so happy that Finland and Sweden joined NATO because I was talking about that about 10 years. And, and the, the best answer I had you know, from Finnish diplomat was, it's a necessary measure. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see, now it's a super necessary measure uh, because it changed a lot of the situation. And the Nordic Baltic region is the most predictable, most stable politically, economically, and militarily in Europe. And uh, the second point is, uh, the European Union has to take care and responsibility of the whole Europe. And when I'm talking about Europe, the people say, you mean EU or Europe? I say, I always mean Europe, because we are in the one boat. And if some people are not yet in, uh, in EU, it's just a question of time. Uh, therefore, that's one region which will be a driving force, very well motivated in the Europe. The second is, is, is uh, Poland and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows when it will happen, but Poland together with Ukraine will be another region with a very stable uh, vision of the Europe's future. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it's very important that uh, it's very important to improve the relationship between Poland and Germany. If we have a, 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 a challenge in Europe that it's relationship between Poland and Germany. If they do well, every, everything, will go do, do, everything will go well in Europe. Uh, I'm not talking about the, but, um, the other countries, in, even with the nuclear powers, uh, because uh, we don't see you know, the consequences uh, in their policies. We had, you know, like France, you know, they are just finding a way, want to be a leader, but at the same time not acting as a leader. So. We have to focus on Nordic Baltic region plus Poland and Poland, German and Poland, Ukrainian. And this is the future of Europe. Uh, and uh, as people may ask, you know, uh, where is Western Europe, you know? But you know, this is like a pendulum, mm -hmm. like cycle, you know? Now it's a time for Eastern Europe, and I agree with, 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 with uh, Daniel Reed in that. It was neglected that uh, someday the Eastern Europe can become, you know, the driving force of, the, of the Europe. 
but we had to take into account all these nice exceptions and all the processes going on in in Poland. <laughs> it's a paradox, but and also in especially in U uh, Hungary. But this is also a question of time. We have to work on that. Not just say these are bad boys, you know, we we don't like them. We should work with them, both inside Europe and both on transatlantic cooperation. Because you know. Uh, it's nice to say strategic autonomy without knowing what it is, without any, any, any goals, without any tools. What, what's a strategy? And you come further, you know, and you see the strategy is Euro Atlantic Union. There's no way out. Anthony, you had, you had something to add. If, if you ha still footnotes. have, it's like seven seconds. Yes, <laughs> just footnote. Absolutely Poland, not because Ambassador Friedman here and the President said, not because the flag color combination is similar, but Poland is absolute, absolutely amazing. So as um, our president said, this U.S., I mean, look at Poland's uh, energy security dimension. They are now trying to build a nuclear power plant with Westinghouse from the United States. That's absolutely important. And on your point, if I may, I think it may be too early to say anything about U.S. Congress, especially House side. I mean, I'm glad, let me repeat this, I'm glad there was no red wave. So there are underlying thinking and what others going on. So we have to be a bit more, we have to give some benefit of doubt. Otherwise, we basically, basically, you know, uh, okay, this is it, then we're not going to work on it. I don't think that's a good strategy. Uh, one, one, for your information, because this is an important issue. So the new house will have uh, something called Select Committee on China. This is a new committee especially on China. I think that's something you may want to watch because what they will say, what they will do is important because this is really about basically going after China committee. So. And if I could take 10 quick seconds, something needs to be Three. done about the United Nations and especially its Security Council where currently Russia is a murderer making judgments on its own future. See, in three. Um, colleagues, we have, uh, uh, my, my, my colleagues are already indicating me that we have very short uh, time span, so please. Uh, how many questions do we have? I see one hand up and then uh, no more. Wow. Okay, then I have one more. Uh, ah, yeah, sorry, there is, there is a second one. So we're going to take the two questions, please, and uh, very shortly introduce yourself, please, and very shortly your question. Yes, my name is uh, Sveitnar Kazom. I'm the uh, senior national representative for Iceland in Camp Atersi to the EFP uh, multinational uh, force there. I actually came back from a change uh, commanding authority today. So um, I wanted to ask you about how you see the military presence of the U.S. evolving in Latvia and basically in all the Baltic countries. The U.S. troops are already present here, of course. There's been pressure from politicians in all three countries, including Latvia, for so-called permanent presence. Is that a possibility? And also, how do you assess the challenges ahead in implementing the policy of uh, the NATO summit in Madrid this summer of, uh, you might say, upgrading or in, uh, enhancing the presence here from battle group level up to brigade level? And of course, running, uh, leading up to the NATO summit in Vilnius next summer. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, Edward? And just want to add, Iceland was the first to recognize the emergence of yes. independence, <laughs> and we did not hesitate. Hello. I am a student from University of uh, Riga-Stradinsk University, and my question is, why do you believe that Putin will go further after they maybe defeat the Ukraine? Why do you believe in it? That's because Moldova is even weaker than Ukraine. You don't. <laughs> okay, then, uh, then in this case, if, is there the third question? Uh, because we're wrapping up, so uh, should I ask it or not? Mm. Uh, okay, I'm going to ask it. Uh, <laughs> the third question, and then please, colleagues, I'm going to give the floor to each of you in the reverse order, uh, which was originally, so uh, Anthony, we're going to start with you. Uh, my question is very simple, a time capsule. So this is, this is, this is, uh, this is 100, y 100 years. Let's not jump 100 years in, in, in front of us, 50 years. 
what is your uh, what is your well wish or what would you like to see in uh, Latvian U.S. relations? But again, very very shortly. Yeah, uh, if I may kindly then uh, start with uh, with with Anthony. Uh, so in this case, we have three questions. Pick whichever you wish to answer. Thank you. My milestone will be let's go because this is a U.S. Latvia partnership. Let me be very concrete and practical, and even a bit political here. I'm trying to be not to be political. But 2024, United States will have a presidential election. That's very important. So what I'm trying to say is that 2023 with a new Congress and presidential campaign going on to November 2024, my point is very simple. Let's interact, let's engage so that we can educate, re-educate politicians so that they do know when they get power. It doesn't matter Republican, Democrat, they got to do a list of to do when it comes down to U.S. Latvian relationship, very concrete and practical. And also, it's not just one guy, you know, the presidential cam candidate or anybody. People who will go with him is also important. So I really urge we work together. I think U.S. Embassy will be a critical role. I know uh, October, another congressional delegation was in town. This kind of ongoing interaction is very important. So let's focus on 2024, 25, immediate two or three years. Thank you. Carlos. I hope you're not suggesting that we try to interfere in the American election on the part of uh, Latvians. I'm talking about policy. <laughs> yeah. um, the only thing that I want to say, if America wants Latvians to like it, uh, there is a movie called January, which has been submitted as our film for the International Award at the Oscars. Give it to that film and we'll be friends forever. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Daniel, uh, what, is, what, is, what, is, what is your responses? What are your responses? Um, the question on U.S. force presence in Latvia in particular and the Eastern Tier of Europe in general <clears throat> is something that's been moving rather rapidly. Uh, I hope that the uh, Canadian-led forward deployed battalion will strengthen into a brigade but I think that in the end, the American presence in this part of Europe is going to have to increase. I think we are going to have to institutionalize an American presence in NATO's Eastern tier for a very long time, at least as long as Russia remains a threat, which is a very, could be a very long time indeed. I think that's going to happen. Um, I think that you know, if I look ahead 50 years, I want to see us learn the best lessons and avoid the worst mistakes of the past hundred years. A free Latvia in a strong, free Europe aligned with the United States. That's what I want to see. I'd like to see a better Russia. And I think a better Russia is possible. But looking ahead, that's what I want. A free Europe, part of a free world, and Latvia as an integral part of it. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, President Zatler, your concluding remarks uh, as you wished. <laughs> no, no, no. I just uh, want to attract attention that in uh, 2024 uh, is another uh, very, you know, exciting uh, performance. It's presidential elections in Russia. Uh, we have forgotten uh, this point <laughs> because because, because of, of, of war in, in, in Ukraine. And uh, the, to, the, uh, to the person who asked about you know Putin's role, I would say let's not pay too much attention on, on, and put all the stakes on, on Putin's personality. We are not dealing with one person. We are dealing with the ruling class of Russia and ideology of war. And uh, really, I, I always say uh, I don't use the word uh, Russism. I use uh, Russia's fascism and Russia's Nazism. And uh, we have to describe uh, this as it is, but uh, I really am looking forward to what this is with excitement, what will happen in the presidential elections. And these two years will pass very quickly. And unfortunately, as, as to my mind, we will still be in war. Gloomy ending. Uh, it's Christmas time, President Zotler. <laughs> Um, so, dear colleagues, thank you, thank you so much for, uh, for, for, for being with us, for participating. A great thanks to to wonderful panel, uh, Daniel Fried, Valdis Zatlers, Anthony Kim, and Carlos Strapes uh, for, for, for entertaining you tonight intellectually. 
Uh, you can find the book uh, under the Christmas tree together with <laughs> some uh, sweets and drinks. So uh, good luck and 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 then see you at the next events. Please read the book, uh, tweet, comment, uh, do whatever you wish uh, for it. Give it to your friends as a Christmas present so that they read as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now. Let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing uh, business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five-star compared to two-star, three-star in other countries. So I'm uh, really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you, Riga Freeport. Big in business, big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers, where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Ladvenergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. 
We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate-neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability. Our promise for the near-term future. We will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two-thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. The untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies. We have been ignited. We are on a path to create a more sustainable world, one that will benefit us today and provide for generations to come. History shows that when it comes to Latvia, there is no mission too great to accomplish. And it is time for a new challenge. Mission C-2030, by bringing together industries and bright minds around the world, we will develop scalable technologies to restore a healthy Baltic Sea environment. We're striving to become an international centre for sustainable innovation by creating opportunities in technology, science, renewable energy and other sectors that recognise the critical need for action on a global scale. Mission Latvia. Restless in nature, united in mission. Join us for action. Pleased to meet you. We are the Riga Freeport. Yes, the one that is located right at the crossroads between west and east, north and south. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now, let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five-star compared to two-star, three-star in other countries. So I'm really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. 
I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you. Riga Freeport. Big in business. Big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Ladvenergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate-neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability our promise for the near-term future. We will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. The untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies. We have been ignited. We are on a path to create a more sustainable world, one that will benefit us today and provide for generations to come. History shows that when it comes to Latvia, there is no mission too great to accomplish. And it is time for a new challenge. Mission C-2030, by bringing together industries and bright minds around the world, we will develop scalable technologies to restore a healthy Baltic Sea environment. We're striving to become an international center for sustainable innovation by creating opportunities in technology, science, 
renewable energy and other sectors that recognize the critical need for action on a global scale. Mission Latvia, restless in nature, united in mission. Join us for action. Pleased to meet you. We are the Riga Freeport. Yes, the one that is located right at the crossroads between west and east, north and south. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now. Let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing uh, business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five star compared to two star, three star in other countries. So I'm uh, really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you, Riga Freeport. Big in business, big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers, where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Latvenergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability our promise for the near-term future. 
we will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two-thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. Untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand, and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies. We have been ignited. We are on a path to create a more sustainable world, one that will benefit us today and provide for generations to come. History shows that when it comes to Latvia, there is no mission too great to accomplish. And it is time for a new challenge. Mission C2030. By bringing together industries and bright minds around the world, we will develop scalable technologies to restore a healthy Baltic Sea environment. We're striving to become an international center for sustainable innovation by creating opportunities in technology, science, renewable energy, and other sectors that recognize the critical need for action on a global scale. Mission Latvia, restless in nature, united in mission. Join us for action. Pleased to meet you. We are the Riga Freeport. Yes, the one that is located right at the crossroads between west and east, north and south. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now. Let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing uh, business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five star compared to two star, three star in other countries. So I'm uh, really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, 
we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you. Riga Freeport. Big in business. Big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Ladvinergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One-fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate-neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability our promise for the near-term future. We will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. The untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies. We have been ignited. We are on a path to create a more sustainable world, one that will benefit us today and provide for generations to come. History shows that when it comes to Latvia, there is no mission too great to accomplish. And it is time for a new challenge. Mission C-2030, by bringing together industries and bright minds around the world, we will develop scalable technologies to restore a healthy Baltic Sea environment. We're striving to become an international center for sustainable innovation by creating opportunities in technology, science, renewable energy, and other sectors that recognize the critical need for action on a global scale. Mission Latvia. Restless in nature, 
United in mission. Join us for action. Pleased to meet you. We are the Riga Freeport. This one is located right at the crossroads between west and east, north and south. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now. Let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing uh, business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five star compared to two star, three star in other countries. So I'm uh, really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you, Riga Freeport. Big in business, big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Ladvenergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability our promise for the near-term future. We will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. 
The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two-thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. The untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand, and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies. We have been ignited. We are on a path to create a more sustainable world, one that will benefit us today and provide for generations to come. History shows that when it comes to Latvia, there is no mission too great to accomplish. And it is time for a new challenge. Mission C-2030. By bringing together industries and bright minds around the world, we will develop scalable technologies to restore a healthy Baltic Sea environment. We're striving to become an international centre for sustainable innovation by creating opportunities in technology, science, renewable energy and other sectors that recognise the critical need for action on a global scale. Mission Latvia. Restless in nature, united in mission. Join us for action. Pleased to meet you. We are the Riga Freeport. Yes, the one that is located right at the crossroads between west and east, north and south. Yes, the one that borders the European Union and Russia, and further along the border between Russia, China, and the rest of the Far East. Yes, the world may have seen bigger ports, but when it comes to quality, whether it be our team, technology, or logistics, not many ports have the same standards as we do. We provide all of the services that a port can offer. We believe that it is better to slightly under-promise and a little bit over-deliver rather than the other way around. This is how reputations are built. Serving the client isn't enough. Positively surprising him is. We may not be the biggest port, but we are one of the best ones to adapt your needs as an investor, client, or business partner. This attitude is built into our DNA. You must keep up expectations. You can only afford happy clients. You simply must satisfy the highest environmental standards. You have to be on time. Your staff is trained to a level of excellence. Perhaps this is because of our Nordic mentality. Accuracy, precision, responsibility, and a genuine talent for planning. Our customers are valuable, and we will always find tailored solutions. Now, let's have a listen to what some of our clients say. When it comes to doing uh, business in Riga compared to the other port authorities we deal, deal with, I mean, they are five-star compared to two-star, three-star in other countries. So I'm uh, really happy to be back in Riga. I'm actually not only happy, I'm proud. I'm proud of Riga. Yes, our location really is a game changer. Everyone knows the shorter the land transport, the lower the costs and greater the profits. We're always happy to save you a couple hundred kilometers. Did we mention Riga? Yes, we did. Riga is a true melting pot for the widest range of cultures and ideas. Almost everything in Riga booms with life, drive, style, and joy. The fastest internet in Europe? Sure. The home of globally known startups? Absolutely. But we must not forget one of Riga's best features. The city is well linked to the world's major aviation hubs, which makes traveling to Riga fast and comfortable. Here at the Riga Freeport, 
we will be glad to work with you and support you in developing infrastructure. We will meet and guide your ships to the pier, and we will send them to their next destination. We will break the ice and clear the way during the winter, and we will definitely help you to break the ice in business. We are pleased to meet you. Riga Freeport. Big in business. Big in quality. The Baltic States, 175,000 square kilometers, where experience meets innovation and opportunities arise. Since 1939, Latvenergo has been at the center of Baltic energy needs, the leading generator and supplier of green energy. One fifth of households in the Baltic States are our clients. Latvenergo has been a part of the Baltic states for several generations. It is clear from the five dimensions of social responsibility that people see us as more than just an energy company. The retail brand of Latvenergo, Electrum, represents sustainable ideas that are transformed into products and services for nearly 800,000 clients throughout the Baltic states. How do we manage to do this? By generating green energy, by delivering energy safely and efficiently, and above all, by being a responsible market leader. We are driven by the development of the energy industry, and we stand together with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Therefore, we are determined to increase Latvia's independence from imported energy sources and double our generation capacity for renewable sources by 2030. Our goal is to ensure that by 2050, we generate fully climate neutral energy in support of Latvia's sustainability our promise for the near-term future. We will modernize our power supply grid and develop green technologies to promote the country's energy independence. The future rests with electric motors, so we are developing electric mobility and its support infrastructure throughout the Baltic states. The gratitude we receive proves stable long-term relations with our investors. All the praise we get is demonstrated by facts. Latvenergo is the first capital company in Eastern Europe and one with an investment credit rating to issue green bonds. Latvenergo is built on firm foundations with four hydropower plants and two combined heat and power plants. This already ensures that two thirds of the energy that is generated in Latvia comes from renewable sources. By 2030, this will be supplemented with solar and wind power plants with a total capacity of 2,300 megawatts. Our future depends on challenging yet achievable goals and careful management. We are a key part of the energy system of the Baltic states, and we confirm this with our daily promise to energize the growth of society. Join us on our path towards the future development of energy. The untamed Baltic Sea, endless forests of pine, a winding coastline of fine white sand and vast peatlands dating back 5,000 years. This is where our restless spirit lies.